Exploring the secrets of China. Of course, it's hard to keep a secret from 1.2 billion people. One of them is bound to tell. So grab your silk gowns and hop in your royal chair. It's time to take an imperial ride through China, one of the world's oldest living civilizations. City is a walled palace where the emperors of China ruled for centuries. The emperor lived most of his life behind these massive gates. I don't have a gadget Chinese kite, so go, go, gadget copter. Every winter, the emperor would leave the forbidden city in a royal procession. Emperors like to do things in a big way. The emperor would come here to the Temple of Heaven to honor his ancestors and pray to the heavens for a good harvest. Thirty-six men carried him in his union, or royal sedan chair. The chair was 12 meters long, 3.6 meters high, and weighed, uh, well, a lot, especially if the emperor had a big dinner. Emperors don't rule China today, but that doesn't mean you can't act like one. Here, a little boy gets an imperial ride in a palanquin, a smaller version of the royal chair. Wonder if they'd hoist the gadget mobile through the streets for me. Guess not. Wowzers! He's even got his own band. Aha! The Hall of Heaven, the Emperor's first stop in the temple. Inside, he would take his tablets and meditate. Except you can't swallow these tablets. They're ancestral tablets believed to contain the spirits of the imperial ancestors. Wonder if they've come out in paperback. Next, the emperor would come here to the Hall of Abstinence, where he would fast and pray. Inside was a private bedroom office and throne. Hey, there's the emperor now. Wowzers, he's looking stiff. Maybe he's been fasting a bit too long. The altar of heaven is where the emperor would come to make a sacrifice to heaven, as if fasting wasn't enough. The round altar has three terraces representing earth, man, and heaven. 
white marble railings with 360 pillars surround each level. The stone in the center is thought to be the holiest place in China. It's also thought to be a great photo opportunity. The emperor would also visit the Hall of Prayer for good harvest. Go, go, Gadget Neck! This temple is 123 feet high with three roofs glazed with over 50,000 blue tiles. There are eight flights of stairs. The top one features these stone reliefs with clouds at the bottom for heaven, a phoenix in the middle for the empress, and a dragon on top for the emperor. Time for the Imperial Field Trip back. The Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest is one of the architectural wonders of the world. That's because it's made completely of wood and not a single nail was used in its construction. Even Chinese emperors needed a place to go for a little R&R. &R. So they built this park just outside the Forbidden City walls. Today, Beihai Park is the best preserved ancient garden in China. Small wonder only emperors were allowed to walk in it. Here's where the emperor spent most of his time. Jade Island. Wowzers! There's the White Dagoba, an onion-shaped shrine built for the Dalai Lama's visit in 1651. The White Dagoba stands 115 feet in the air. It's a great place to see the city of Beijing, or just climb up and down for the aerobic exercise. At the foot of the Dagoba stands Shen Yin Hall. Its glazed tiles feature 445 beautiful images. Uh, images of Buddha, the religious leader from India who founded Buddhism. Aha! I see the famous five dragon pavilions in the distance. I'd like to get a closer look. Here we are at the five dragon pavilions. Built in 1602, the pavilions are connected by zigzagging bridges that, when viewed from above, look like the head of a dragon. Wow, speaking of dragons, here's the famous nine dragon screen that was built in 1756. It stands five meters high and 27 meters long, and once protected the temple entrance from evil spirits. My feet are dragon just trying to get around it. When the emperor's feet were a dragon, he would come here to the Jing Xing Tsai, or studio of rest and heart. Here in this garden, within a garden, the emperor had time to rest his heart and his feet. The halls of the studio are all connected by the Fan B Corridor, a traditional Chinese covered walk. Wow, it's our lucky day. Looks like the Emperor's having a garage sale. Let's see, I already have a hat and shoes. Wonder how much he wants for those silk robes. Actually, the last Emperor left in a hurry. He didn't have time for a garage sale. He didn't even have a garage. Jingguan Hall in the northwest part of Beihai Park was built in the 18th century for Emperor Quan Long to take a rest. By now, he should be fully rested. Inside are tablets displaying the handwriting of one of China's greatest calligraphers. In all, there are over 40,000 Chinese characters, which makes learning our 26 letters a walk in Beihai Park. Beihai Park is also home to a city that's definitely not for squares. The circular city, or round town, lies just across the water from Jade Island. You could go around in circles trying to find your way in. The oldest inhabitants of the round town are the trees. The hall which receives light is home to a priceless five-foot-tall Buddha carved from a single piece of white jade. My keen sense of direction tells me that I've landed at the Marco Polo 
Buffalo Bridge, originally built in 1189 AD. It's named after the famous Italian merchant. You guessed it, Marco Polo. The bridge is 770 feet long, and like most feet, it has arches. 11, to be exact. The railings of the bridge hold 140 stone posts crowned with 485 foo dogs. The foo dogs are half line and half dog and serve to protect the bridge from danger. Each one is different, but they all like a pat on the head once in a while. Sit, foo dog. Good foo dog. Well, field trip fanatics, hope you've enjoyed our time in China, touring the Temple of Heaven, and hiking the hills of Beihai. We tried on the Emperor's new, eh, uh, old clothes, lounged on the lakes, met some interesting characters, and marched over the Marco Polo. Until next time, it's time to stop fooling around and go, go, gadget field trip. Peek.